Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here with you this morning and to have the opportunity to speak to you about a very, very important topic. Important, not least because I strongly believe it's the private sector which is best placed to deliver the sustainable, inclusive growth that the MENA region so badly needs. But let me start by saying a little bit about how and why the EBRD works with the private sector. Now, the EBRD was founded just over 25 years ago to help the countries of Eastern Europe and the former Soviet Union navigate the transition from central planning to market economies. And our record in that region was such that many other countries then asked it, whether EBRD could help and invest in their, in their countries as well. So for the last five years, we've also been working in the Middle East and North Africa, in MENA. And since 2012, we've invested over 5 billion euros in more than 120 projects in Egypt, Jordan, Morocco, and Tunisia. And it's no secret that we soon expect Lebanon to become a shareholder and a country of operations. And I'm certain that that list of countries in which the EBRD operates in this region will continue to grow. Now, central to the EBRD's mandate is what our founding document defined as a promotion of private and entrepreneurial initiative. At least 60% of EBRD's lending has to be in the private sector, although we also do work very, very closely with the governments of our countries of operations, especially in the field of public-private partnerships. Now, within the countries in the MENA region where we invest, Already, 75% of our lending is to the private sector. So why this emphasis? Why this emphasis on the private sector-led development in MENA? Well, actually, for many reasons, but particularly because the region faces two major challenges, very specific to this region, that cannot be solved without the private sector playing the leading role. One challenge is, of course, demographic, in the shape of the region's youth bulge. A very well-known World Bank study concluded that the region will need to create about 6 million new jobs each year simply to absorb new labor market entrants and bring down unemployment, especially among young people. The other challenge, and this one is, of course, twinned with the first, is a struggle by the region's economies to create the number of jobs required to keep these young people in meaningful employment. In Egypt, just for as an example, these uh, dual challenges have now combined to create the situation where youth unemployment currently stands at 37%. So who's going to create the sustainable productive jobs that will provide work for the generations of tomorrow? Now, of course, the state, the informal private sector, they do have a role, but they're not the answer. Neither has the potential to deliver the growth or the productivity gains that are required. The state sector provides security, of course, to those who work in it, but rarely the dynamism, the innovation that the wider economy needs. And firms in the informal private sector are simply too small to achieve economies of scale and scope. So instead, I truly believe we need to look at the formal private sector to generate inclusive growth and enhanced productivity. And beyond that, to raise living standards for all, to boost stability, and provide a credible alternative to economic migration. Now, the potential for growth from the private sector in MENA is certainly there, but it does face barriers to further expansion. I think we can dismantle these barriers to progress. In fact, we're doing just that in the countries where we're already investing. But I can also base my remarks on an excellent enterprise survey and report on what's holding back the private sector in MENA. This is a survey that we worked on recently together with the European Investment Bank and the World Bank. This survey drew on the responses to questions that we asked of some 6,000 firms in the formal private sector. So it was very, very comprehensive. And I think you should also note that the geographical reach of this survey was much broader than the four countries in which EBRD works currently in the region. It included Djibouti, it included Lebanon, it included the West Bank and Gaza, and Yemen, as well as the four countries, Morocco, Tunisia, Egypt, and Jordan, where EBRD is now active. 
And the comparative size of the many barriers to private sector development in the MENA region, of course, will vary from year to year. But the overall list has stayed fairly constant. So let's go through that list. One is corruption, experienced directly by firms themselves or in the perception of the political system. In the survey, in some countries, more than 50% of companies identified corruption as an impediment to their work. Fear of corruption is probably a factor in explaining why firms from those countries interact with the governments and engage in public transactions far less than those in peer economies. They try to avoid government. Now, we've organized already anti-money laundering training in Tunisia to help fight the problem. But frankly, this is just uh, a tip of the iceberg. We need to do a lot, lot more to tackle this problem. Another one of the major obstacles to private sector development in this region has been political instability. Although, of course, in now in some of our countries, this is less of a problem today than it was a few years back. Enhancing political stability, combating corruption, of course, these sometimes go hand in hand. And we've made considerable progress in many of EBRD's countries of operation. Transparency, improving governance, enhancing competition, and in securing a better balance between the state and the private sector. For example, the EBRD set up investment councils, platforms for dialogue between businesses and the, and the governments about policy reform in many countries. And we're going to try and do the same here in the MENA region. A third area is the unreliable supplies of electricity. This is another phenomenon which stifles the growth of the private sector. But it's an area, too, where we've seen improvement in recent times. What made this so acute a problem in the past was a rapid expansion of demand for power, distorting subsidies, inefficiencies due to state control of the power sector, and lack of adequate investment. Now, we in EBRD, we've been a pioneer in the financing of renewable energy in this region, most recently in supporting solar plants in Jordan. I'd also mention our stake in the privately owned Kaladi wind farm in Morocco, boosting the country's renewable energy output, reducing its greenhouse gas emissions. In general, we can see the way that the private sector is acting as a catalyst for one of the great transformations of our times, increasing investments in renewables and energy efficiency. And I think the MENA region already produces some of the cheapest renewable energy in the region, so there's a good answer to that obstacle. The potential to do much more. Now, another obstacle undermining private sector growth in this region is poor access to finance, especially the difficulties that SMEs, as opposed to the larger firms, encounter in trying to raise loans. Indeed, the evidence suggests that many private sector firms have already, in a way, reconciled themselves to this state of affairs. They've sort of stopped bothering to even open checking, checking accounts or savings accounts. Now, the banks that uh, dominate the financial sector seem to have adopted a very cautious approach in this region towards credit, uh, based on traditional lending technologies and rather conservative practices. Now, all over the EBRD region, we've been active in supporting SMEs in their efforts to grow and raise the finance that they need. Women's economic participation in this region is particularly low, as we know, and as elsewhere, I think we need to work hard at helping to boost the economic power of female entrepreneurs. So in Egypt, I'm very proud of our Women in Business program. This provides a comprehensive package of financial and technical support for women who are starting up or expanding their companies. And on lending to SMEs through local banks is a major, major theme of EBRD's work in this area. Only last year, we unveiled a $140 million package for Egypt's QNB Al Ali Bank for on lending to SMEs and energy efficiency projects. This is another way in which we're supporting the development of the private sector. Another obstacle to private sector growth in this region is the skills gap that we see in the workforce. The education systems are turning out young people, quite frankly, without the skills that the market needs. The focus within higher education seems to be on passing exams so as to land jobs in the public sector. Technical, vocational education, training suitable for private sector jobs are too low a priority, far too low. At the same time, in the workplace, training on the job is poor, if it exists at all. According to the survey, skills shortages seem to be of particular concern 
for those firms with the highest potential for growth and the highest share of university-educated employees. So we in EBRD, we've been involved in training and job matching young people in the retail and hospitality sectors in Jordan and are eager to do much more of the same in the other countries in the region. And lastly, we're working hard to remove the obstacles that the private sector faces in expanding trade and exports and to ease restrictions on the way companies can enter and exit markets and on foreign investment. And we can do this through our work on promoting the cause of economic integration supporting trade and covering the risks associated with it, but also by investing in infrastructure, which brings our countries of operations and their regions much, much closer together. The more trade, the higher the value of imports and exports, the more we see productivity and competitiveness grow. Excessive red tape, we all know about that. That prevents firms from realizing the full potential of export markets, makes it much harder to import crucial production inputs. And as a result, these firms, they stay less productive than they could have been with better access to international markets. And foreign direct investment, the great advantage of it, brings just not only just more funds and better technology, but also more effective management techniques as well. So we need to really help surmount that obstacle too. So taken together, taking those obstacles together, ladies and gentlemen, these obstacles to private sector growth in the MENA region, I think they could sound quite daunting but actually, I'm pretty optimistic about the chances of dismantling these obstacles bit by bit, including, of course, through EBRD's own investment and policy work on the ground. And I base that optimism on the readiness with which national governments and uh, entrepreneurs are moving to remedy these problems themselves. Of course, there's a long way to go. Of course, the governments and the entrepreneurs need to work harder at it, push even more to dismantle these obstacles. But I'm optimistic, and I base that also on the EBRD's track record in achieving similar goals in other countries. We've had a bit of a head start, of course, elsewhere. Many of our other countries of operations are now converging with the levels and standards of advanced economies. And ladies and gentlemen, I do hope that what I've done today is convey to you the strength of my belief in the private sector in the MENA region. The formal private sector is the region's main engine for growth and for job creation. We know its potential is there. Our optimism about our role in, in the development of the MENA private sector really rests on very sound foundations, the foundations of our own record and expertise in this area over the 25 years of our existence. But we didn't do all this on our own. We needed help, and we will need your support in this region in the years ahead. We need ideas, we need entrepreneurs, and we need bankable projects to invest in, and of course, Fundamentally, we need the active engagement of reforming governments and co-investors and donors to help make things happen. But we look forward to working together with you on this most exciting of ventures. Thank you very much.